Story 1. My newlywed husband and I moved into our first home. It was really old and run down, with good bones but had sat empty for several years. We learned after moving in that the previous owner, an elderly lady, Mary, had been moved into an old folks home due to dementia and then recently died. Someone had left her funeral pamphlet in our letterbox and her funeral was at the church next to our house. We understand that she had lived there her whole life and never married or had children. The house was opposite a small water hole. I'm not sure how to describe it. The activity started mild when we moved in. We could hear footsteps like someone running on timber floorboards at all hours of the night. At first we laughed it off. Within two weeks we were joking about our ghost and my mother bought me sage to cleanse the house. She put it on my bed but it disappeared. It reappeared later in a cupboard in an unused room in the house. With it was a very old photograph of a little girl in the broad hat in front of our house. Creepy, but we were unfazed. We are atheists and didn't bother with the sage. One night, the footsteps intensified. We could hear it outside our open bedroom door. I looked up to see an apparition of what looked like a boy who was in swimming trunks. I screamed. I was so terrified. The next day, we cleansed the house with the sage and the activity stopped. I did some research later and found a new story of a boy who drowned in the water hole opposite the house who was the same age as Mary. Maybe they were friends. Everything was normal again until we renovated the house. The footsteps were back and the activity intensified. Objects would slide off tabletops and crash into the wall. Small pieces of furniture would be knocked over before our eyes. My baby toddler would scream at something we couldn't see. We found that talking about it or acknowledging it made it worse. My mother came over for a coffee and I was telling her about what was going on. At that very moment, a large cookbook flew off the shelf and onto the floor a few feet away. There was so much more, but I've tried to forget the whole experience. We decided to make contact with it. This was a very bad idea. I looked up some YouTube videos. I won't go into what I did, but I blacked out the middle of the day in broad daylight and was sent to a hellish void. I could hear screaming and growling and could smell smoke. It was like a near-death experience, but instead of bright light, I saw hell. I know that sounds insane, and I thought so too. I went to the hospital to be assessed, thinking that I must be crazy or had a seizure or a brain tumor or something, anything to explain what had happened. I am 100% healthy and sane. No carbon monoxide poisoning, no nothing. Everything stopped. We did not talk about it for fear it would come back and a year later we moved away. My youngest child knew nothing about what had happened and had just begun to talk. As we pulled into our new house, she cried and begged for us never to return to the old house again. She said it scared her. Nothing weird or creepy has happened to us since and I have never gone back to our old house. We still own it though. Story two. I've been a witness to many strange occurrences in our house over the years, many of which happened to my very skeptical friends as well. We cannot explain this. The strange occurrences mainly center around my father and sister, while my mother and I thankfully have only been peripheral witnesses. One, when I was around seven years old, my sister and our babysitter were watching TV when the blood completely drained from my sister's face. She was 11 and she tried to scream, but nothing was coming out. She then says she saw a small hairy man walk through the living room right in front of us. She wouldn't stop crying. My mother thought she was making it up, but my father was eerily quiet. 2-1. When I was about 14, my father was screaming at me to leave the glass sliding door alone. Apparently, I was violently pulling at it, screaming at him to open it. I wasn't at home at the time. 3. My best friend came to visit me, and this being South Africa, was waiting at the security gate of our house to let him in. He was calling my name and I was on the toilet. We both hear my dad saying, he's on the toilet, he'll be right there. My blood froze. My father wasn't home. We had no idea what to make of it. 4. While another friend, the biggest skeptic I'd say, was sleeping over, he, I, and my sister were discussing my friend's girlfriend at the time. It was the middle of the evening, not too late, and we were sitting in my sister's room. Something was violently throwing the chairs around in the kitchen. The sound was as clear as day. Thinking it was a burglar, we locked the door and pressed the alarm button. When the security guys arrive, all the doors are locked and there's nothing amiss in the kitchen. This was truly frightening. 
Five, the whole family has heard a woman laughing and knocks on the doors. The TV switches on by itself and volume increases decrease on multiple televisions, lights come on and off, etc. We hear whispering at night, mostly indistinct, but sometimes referencing us, psss, my sister's name, psss. This was a weekly occurrence. Six, my father saw a small humanoid running up our stairs right around the time my sister saw the thing in our living room. He has also seen a woman walking around the house multiple times. Seven, this happened about three years ago. My cousin was around eight years old and went inside the house to go get a swimming towel. She starts screaming and runs out of the house, face white as a sheet. She says there was a badly burnt child in my sister's room smiling at her. She was truly shaken and stuck by her story. She doesn't like to come to visit anymore. These are just some of the weird shit that has happened in this house. And yes, my family is still living there. My father is an extremely quiet guy to the point of it being painful and not one to suffer fools which makes me even more uneasy about all of this. We're not particularly religious or believers in the paranormal, but enough weird shit has happened to make me question this reality. Story three, my family and I used to live in a house which we've thankfully moved out of. That was a small school before the owners bought and redid it, we were renting. My mom, sister and I all heard our names being whispered in the passage by my mom's bedroom. My mom would often see a little child peeking around the corner at her and one day we had people over for a braai and we were all in the kitchen. These people are heavily religious, think small Afrikaans, town Christians, and did not believe in anything paranormal. While we were all sitting around chatting, my sister's Bluetooth speaker that has like a radio setting turned on out of nowhere with the volume completely up. The speaker was on the counter where we could all see it, and nobody was near the speaker. Then one of our kitchen cupboards opened and closed on its own. They didn't come back to our house for a long time after that. One night my stepdad had turned the heater off and then switched the plug off at the wall before he went to bed. But when he came through into the lounge the next morning the heater was on again. He's the type of guy to just brush anything paranormal off and come up with a logical explanation for it but he got extra spooked when he was running a bath one night. And he only had the hot tap on. He left the bathroom for two seconds and when he came back the hot tap had been turned off and the cold tap was on. Finally, my weirdest experience there was when I was in the kitchen making food, and I turned my back to put something in the microwave. I heard like a little knock sound, and when I turned to look, one of our kitchen utensils that had previously been on a hook above the counter was sitting on the counter itself. My sister was at school and my mom was in her bedroom on the opposite side of the house. I later befriended the owner's son. And he told us that the neighbors they had, when they still lived in the house he was in grade four, used to come over for bray eyes all the time and were generally very friendly with the family. He started having horrific nightmares and seeing things in his bedroom that caused him to move to his brother's room or his parents' room at night. Turns out the neighbors that came over all the time were Satanists. The family had a priest come and bless the house twice and he stopped seeing things but the nightmares never stopped and he still gets them now. In his early 20s, all my life we've had weird experiences like mirrors coming flying off the wall, hearing and seeing things, and just generally unexplainable occurrences. My best was waking up in the middle of the night thinking that my cousin, who I was staying with at the time, had come into my room and was standing by my bed looking at me. I asked him what he wanted, and when he didn't answer, I looked closer and realized that it wasn't my cousin. I ended up just saying, Sorry, but I'm too tired for this and I have an exam tomorrow. And I turned over and went back to sleep. Story 4. My childhood home was notoriously haunted. We moved into the house when I was around 6 and my brother was 5. It started slowly with him and me seeing weird things at night and having constant nightmares. Things would go missing only to return a few days later. We would constantly hear people talking. Footsteps and doors slamming when no one was around. Over the years, it started to escalate, and there are a lot of stories, so I have included a few. One parent was in their bedroom during a party when they heard a child running, and the door to their walk-in closet creaked shut. She assumed it was me or my brother and went to open the door. When she did, some of the t-shirts that were hung close to the floor were swaying. Peeking out from behind them was a little girl she did not know. The little girl vanished before her eyes. I was home alone, waiting for my BF to come over. I heard him call my name so I came out of my bedroom and headed toward the front door. When I came to the stairs that separated my room from the front door, I saw this thing. 
It almost resembled a person, pitch black, crawling up the stairs. It cracked its neck to look up at me and I ran. I called my BF and he wasn't there yet. I hid in my room until he came. The last one I'll put is after my family moved out. We rented it for a while. The tenant complained of similar things that we experienced in our first few months there. He went out of town and left his dog in the garage. His friend came to check on it and the dog was missing. He later found the dog who was fine, just scared locked in the crawl space that was completely separate from the garage and two closed doors away from where the dog was left. This crawl space was the worst place in the house for negative activity. Story five. This happened when I was 11 and visiting a lighthouse in Michigan that was supposedly haunted by a boy. My parents wanted to take a tour with the tour guide, but I wanted to play outside considering we had been touring various sites in the Upper Peninsula that day. No one was around, so my parents ended up letting me play outside the lighthouse while they took a quick tour. As I played outside, a beat-up ball rolled up to my feet. I bent over to pick it up, and as I stood back up I saw a boy standing next to the edge of the lighthouse looking at me. I assumed the ball was his, so I tossed it over to him and he wandered away. I didn't think any about it, but when my parents were done with the tour, they asked what I did. I told them something along the lines of I was just wandering around. Oh, and I helped this kid get his ball back. The tour guide was with my parents, and when I mentioned the kid he looked startled because as I mentioned earlier, there was no one other than us at the lighthouse. Only three cars. My parents' car, the tour guide's car, and the car belonging to the person at the front desk. The tour guide asked me to take a look at a picture in the lighthouse. I know this sounds super cliche, but when he showed me the picture, it was the picture of the same boy with the same beat up ball. That kid died at the lighthouse. We checked around and there was no boy. So you might be asking me, why was this creepy, especially considering that the boy never scared me or tried to scare me? What creeps me out is that I touched that ball. When it comes to ghost stories, most people only report a ghost, not other objects. Assuming that was a ghost with his ball, what the heck did I touch? Also, it felt solid like a real ball. If it was a ghost ball, then how the heck do you explain what I touched? This still bothers me to this day. Story six, my family moved into a newly built home in a small town that my dad immediately insisted was haunted. None of us experienced anything. Important since my mom had previously lived in a house she believed haunted my sister and me too, but we were too little to remember any of the events she says we experienced, so we waved dad's concerns off. Fast forward seven or eight years, I'm around 25 at the time. We've got the house on the market and most of my family has moved out. I lived there with a friend who needed a place to stay and with my little brother stayed part time and our two cats. I've moved into the master bedroom. One night I'm woken up by the sound of my bedroom door creaking open. I usually leave it open a little so the cats can come and go. So I figure it's one of them. But as I roll over, I realize they're both in bed with me. So I look toward the door and see a humanoid shape slink into my room. I use the term literally. I was trying to stay quiet and keep a low profile. At first I thought it was my roommate. She, you know, comes in once in a while. But then I remember she was not home. The mind starts running fast. Little brother. No, he's not home either. Conclusion. I'm home alone and there's someone in my room. I start to get up and this figure starts clicking and gibbering at me. No words. My eyes are adjusting, and I'm looking at this feral, hairy, humanoid shape. About four feet tall, the best description I can give is goblinoid. And naked. As I'm realizing I can't identify it, the thing fucking lunges at me. I defend myself with the only option at hand, a super heavy blanket I sleep with. The creature has me on my back, pinned on my bed and is just waiting on me. Scratches and punches. The scratches are running off the blanket, the heaviest, thickest blanket I've ever had, but I can feel the punches. I accidentally pulled the blanket over my head, as I was still gripping it when I brought my arms up to protect my face. Here's thing one. I was bullied and left alone a lot as a kid. I overcame a lot of fear and loneliness. I had come to pride myself on my ability to handle threats and situations. And that included the unsubstantiated belief many of us develop that we'd handle a supernatural situation well. And I don't want to let myself down. Every monster has a weakness and I don't want to let this one do whatever it is doing without a fight. 
I thrust both arms upwards to knock this creature off balance and then roll to throw it off me. And as soon as I do, it disappears. I'm sitting up in my bed, sweating and breathing hard. My cats are awake now, looking at me like nothing's wrong. But I can still feel some of the harder hits that creature dealt. Hell, I can smell it. The room is dark, but dead silent, so after a moment I bound out of bed and start turning the lights on. Nothing. I went through the whole house and grabbed a knife in the kitchen. Nothing, and no one. A dream, right? Well, here's thing two. I'm a lucid dreamer. I know when I'm dreaming. Also, do you know how a lot of people say they can't fight or throw punches in dreams? I can. But it takes conscious effort. And I didn't feel any of that. It just didn't feel like a dream. Still, that's the cleanest answer, right? Especially given my cat's lack of panic. Just a dream. And I had myself convinced of that until a few years later, so I didn't tell anyone about it. But my brother and I left the house before it was sold, so my sister moved in and was living there with her boyfriend and their friend. I didn't learn about this until a few years after the house did sell, but they started hearing shit, including the clicking and gibbering of my feral goblin. This drew many an I told you so from dad, so to this day, 15 years later, I don't know, I'm not sure it was a dream. Story 7. When my son was three, he started having dreams and visions of people coming out of holes and dancing in his room. He said they were trying to tell him something. He also said he would wake up to see faces in the dark and they were screaming at him. There were many nights when his screaming would wake me up and I would run into his room. It honestly sounded like he was being attacked. One night in his room, he was telling me about one of his experiences. I saw a streak of white light move up over his face. Another time I ran into his room and he was on his knees, looking around the room. I didn't say anything and just continued to watch him in the dark. This went on for about 15 minutes and finally, he looked at me and said one word. Manya. It was his name for whatever spirit he was seeing. Another time on the baby monitor, we heard a loud male voice say, Stop that. We happened to know a mother and daughter psychic team and enlisted their help. They tuned in and both said they saw an evil old man spirit from the 40s who brought in other souls to make mischief. He also smoked a cigar. We often smelled cigar smoke in our hallway outside my son's bedroom. They tried cleaning the house remotely. They lived in another city. We thought all was good until one evening we were walking into our dining room to sit down. When my son went flying forward into the table, he started crying and said that someone pushed him from behind. We kept our son in our room that night and my wife and I both heard what sounded like an old man making gagging noises from my other son's room, he was 11 months old. Our friends put together a whole team and they came and cleaned the house. It was quite a process and our neighbors probably thought we were real weirdos, but they got the job done. We haven't had any issues in 10 years. It was really scary. Story eight. My cousins lived in a house around the block from us, but I hated going there. I was a kid, but I never felt comfortable in their house. It was a bad or weird vibe or something, so we always played outside. When they moved into their new home, it wasn't much better, but not as bad as their old place. However, I never went into their basement alone. OMG, even just typing this memory out is giving me goosebumps. I remember I had to use their washroom, but for some reason, I went into their basement washroom the first time. And the minute I closed the door, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up and I refused to look in the mirror. Something told me not to, so I shut my eyes, turned around, and ran out without even using the toilet. That's when I said I would never go into their basement alone. I then started hearing stories from my cousins and their grandfather. One day he was home cooking but heard the kids playing video games in the basement. When the food was ready, he called the kids and getting annoyed that they didn't come up, he went downstairs to tell them to come up. But no one was even down there. The TV wasn't even on. He was alone in the house. My cousins also had stuff happen to them. The sink faucet turning on when they were in the shower, bedroom doorknobs rattling in the middle of the night. All of them slept with doors locked as if doors will stop ghosts, but whatever will make you feel safe, I guess. And my cousin hung her rosary on the inside of her dork nub, but when she woke up, the cross part was broken off and on the floor. Jesus fucking Christ, I am so creeped out right now. Anyway, it turned out that before they left their old house, my older cousin looked out the window the night before and saw an apparition sitting on the hood of their car. She blinked because she thought it was her eyes playing tricks on her and it was still there. 
So she did a long blink, opened her eyes again, and it was gone. They are convinced that the apparition followed them to their new house, because all that shit that happened at their old house started happening at their new house. They lived in that house for like 20 years and they said they got used to it. What the fuck? Story 9. The earliest memory I have is of an experience with an apparition. Based on what I know, I was no more than 3 years old when I saw it. My parents didn't believe me, always had some explanation for me. We moved houses and tiny things would happen here and there. But once again, my parents always chalked it up to an overactive imagination. There was a full body apparition that both my brother and I saw as it walked past a doorway while we were home alone. Fast forward to getting married and moving into an old apartment and things start to heat up a little bit. Bins would get flipped over and the contents dumped on the floor. Things would slide off of the back of our vanity, about 18 inches deep, and fly three feet to hit the footboard of our bed, not gently. More activity than I had experienced before, but still not a lot. We moved into an almost brand new apartment, and while one or two things happened, things calmed down significantly. Then we moved in with my in-laws while my husband went to school. Cue the real events. The house would go through periods of high activity, particularly centered around me. My husband would hear me calling him from another room. I wouldn't be calling him. He would see me pass by the bottom of the stairs as he was coming down and would follow me around the corner into the far room only to a dead end with the room empty. I came in from the chicken coop to him, upset because I'd been calling him from all over the house I'd been outside the whole time. It would make one of the dogs go feral, barking and snarling at nothing. I would have small, soft items thrown at me. I would hear clapping and walking around the house and the dogs would go looking for what made the noise. Here's the main story. My husband was working nights and I was home alone on the farm while the in-laws were out of state, on a trip. One of the dogs goes into an episode, staring at nothing in the middle of the living room, losing its rabid dog. I can't get her to calm down. Usually a light touch on the back will snap her out of it, but I could not call her off this time. I finally go to my room to take a breather, and I hear her stop. Maybe 15 minutes later, she's at it again. I can't describe how terrifying it is to see her like this, like I said, feral. I go halfway up the stairs and talk to her through the banister, finally getting her to come over to me and stop barking. She keeps looking next to me at the top of the stairs, and then a huge slam on the baby gate happens, rattling the gate and the banister. I ignore it because I've heard that's the best thing to do when something's right next to you. The dog barks, but I get her stopped again. Then right in my line of sight, I see a pen slide forcefully off the table, flying multiple feet before hitting the ground. The dog immediately runs to attack and goes into another fit looking at something next to the table. I start to lose it, and immediately go back downstairs to my bedroom. I sit in my bed next to my cat napping there. He stands up and comes to me since I'm upset and crying. I hear the dog move back to barking in the living room, closer to my room. A minute later, my cat turns to look at the doorway, his back raised ears pinned back and his hair stands on end, looking straight at the doorway. I ran out of the house at that point. That was the worst it ever got. I have lots of other little stories though. I just moved into a brand new house and knocked on wood nothing yet. I refuse to talk about paranormal activity allowed in any home I stay in, and I think subconsciously I pushed myself to only move into new construction for fear of stirring anything in an existing house up. With what I know about my experiences throughout my life, compared with where I was staying, I've kind of begun to think I might be a poltergeist. A new construction home was the only place I felt safe moving into. So while my story isn't to the level of a horror movie, I'm happy to be out of old houses and apartments, 